This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So we've got us a cooler, it's not working right. Let's go in here and see what's going on, see what the story is. Don't know if this is the right one yet or not, but I can tell you it might be 46 degrees. Let's see if we can get up there and take a look at that coil. I wanna see if it's dirty. Look at that, it's a cooler. Imagine that, right? What I wanted to do was look and see if the coil was clean, which it looks like it is pretty clean. I mean, for the most part, yeah, you've got some superficial stuff here on the front. The reason why it's actually down in tip, because it was up to 60, I guess, earlier, is they opened up the freezer door to bring it down. I wanna check that and see if that'll give me the manual real quick, because I don't remember. I wanna make sure the setting on this is right. Their manual online for your phone just absolutely sucks. Look how much freaking crap we got here for this stinking control. Just to find out how to set the temperature on and off. I mean, look at this, all that. Just give me a shortcut. Okay, I opened it up just to see if there's any weirdoness in here. We didn't install this thermostat or this equipment. We just maintain it. So like when you see Ben, it's like, what the hell does Ben stand for? So you're trying to look through here, it's just, nonsense of what this crap is. Web link, if you look at that right there, the manual is way too small for your phone. So SF is sensor failure basics. Hit menu, it tells you it's one, that's default. ASD stands for anti-short cycle, uh, cycle delay. Hit menu again, that's one, that's default. Off, off is actually the off temperature it turns off at. 34 is where I'm setting it at. On, it's gonna come on at 37. Five, six, seven, it's three degree swing. We're calling for cooling. We've got the little snowflake there. Everything should be fine. I just wanted to make sure, because when you're not familiar with it, it could be something stupid as that. Somebody gets in here, pushes buttons immediately just to try to get things done. Wanted to wipe that off. So now we're gonna go up on the roof and see if we can find out what's going on up there. Basically, things are dead right now. I mean, we got a lot of maintenance crap to do, which I don't know, maybe we'll do a video on how to do a maintenance on an ice cream machine, I don't know. But yeah, changing belts and seals. Let's go up here and see what we got. I figured worst case scenario, today's Friday. Uh, I needed something for this weekend. Let's uh, see if we can find something worthwhile here for you. What's going up? It's just been a while since I've been here. So it's gonna be one of these two I'm, be I'm betting. They got multiple different coolers here and coils are clean and it's not running, so that could be a problem. Something just came on. This one here, which feels cold. I can't tell which one's which, so let's look and see if we can find a liquid injection sensor on there. Usually I tell you that it's a freezer. That's hot. That's really hot. Well, gee, I wonder what that would be from. If that's super stinking hot. So once again, what I usually do, guys, is I feel, and this thing is hotter than blue blazes. So guess what? Fans either got a fan cycle problem, or the fan's not running, or it's bad. Just yanked all the screws out of it. Motor's not hot. It's got those junk snap disc controls there. It's got one, two, two uh, off cycle defrost there on the clock. Nine pounds. 404 cooler. There, I got it labeled finally. You can find it. Guess what? I got a marker. I can afford a marker. There you go. There goes the fan. No runny, runny. That would probably be off of one of these. So there's one control that was already chopped off. So that was probably high pressure and the other one's fan cycle most likely. Side glass is flashing a little bit. That could be from just being overheated. Let's find out which one is that control or we can cycle this back. These are all brittle. They already got one aftermarket subco on there on that. That is probably where it's at, ain't it? That will be getting one like this if it's all said and done. Those, those little snap disc things are jerk garbage. They work fine if you're gonna uh, run it into a controller to control it or a relay or something, but those little contacts can't handle psyching a fan on and off all that over and over. 
There's our high pressure control switch, orange wires coming back, jumping over one to line. The other one comes over to a coil on the uh, contactor. The other line goes over to low pressure control, so that's to shut it all down. So fan cycle control, here's fan cycle control, that is yellow. Look at that. There's yellow, and he's a, a wire, a zip tie from like a baggie from back in the day. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, is it lasted longer than the plastic junk. So yeah, that's, that's it. So let's go ahead and jump that thing together. That way it can run while we're going to get in the control. I'm sure that works, definitely. We're gonna play a little dangerous today. I don't feel like grabbing my meter. We got it jumped, so that should allow it to run. There we go. That will give us the unit running so that we can get the roller replaced, which I got one down in the truck, no big deal. Our primary problem is the fan control. And you gotta remember too, it's not cycling it off, but it should have a little reserve capacity in there. Let's go ahead and get this thing replaced and then we'll give it a little squirt and we'll see if we can find a leak. I'm not worried about it being too horribly low. It's not like it's large amount, plus it's cold out right now. It is 40 degrees out. Looks like condenser fan cycling control. There we go. Granted, everything's gotta be crammed in here nice and tight. There we go, Renko. This stupid van is so flipping small. It looks like it's big, but it's not. Got refrigerant tea in here. Actually, we won't need a refrigerant tea, will we? Yeah, not really. So we shouldn't even need a refrigerant tea. We'll put it right on there where that other one is. Sometimes I like to be able to do it off the liquid liquid uh, receiver, but yeah, we're just gonna leave it off. It's one less thing for it to leak at. A couple crimp-ons. Wagos! Wago my ego. Okay, and we'll do two blues on that. There you go. Happy Easter, everybody, too. Just wanted to mention that. Today's Good Friday. And that should be about all we need on that. And then all, then we gotta have a Romex connector there. And to make it a little easier getting it up there, you guys want a hook that'll actually get the stuff up and down for you. Simple, oh, uh, simple washer welded onto a piece of straight uh, ground stock here. Weld a washer there and there. This allows you to hook things and then dump them by pulling the other side of the rope. You can pick things up, down, and you can buy them. Uh, they make this hook thing, it's 45 bucks or something stupid, but you can build it for nothing. So we got everything up here. That made it easy enough to carry it up. Sight glass is stabilizing. Like I said, we just barely are a little low. One pound, probably more than enough to put it where it needs to be at. Not I'm even gonna mess with looking for a leak. As usual, guys, these caps do not need to be put on with a pair of pliers. They're plastic. All they are there to do is to keep the dust out. You want to stop a leak, put a brass cap on it. These people that like to tighten this up thinking they're actually stopping a leak is idiotic. All you're doing is smashing the gasket. Cold pack, you suck. Do you think maybe it would not be important to be able to hook your gauges up? What kind of bullcrap design is that? You can tell when outside companies come into your town and put this trash in, and then you have to have all these problems with it. I mean, these are JB hoses, but shoot, I mean, that just, that's just idiotic, pure idiotic. All right, so we just do a little attitude adjustment, put a little bit of a canner on it. So we can see what we're running here on 404, running a 19 degree evaporator, 72 condensing temperature. So we're running a little bit on the cooler side of things anyway. Like I said, I'm gonna add about a pound to it. When we cycle it off, I won't be running it below 90 degree liquid temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and do it at this point where we're at now, just because that'll give us a little reserve capacity when it gets stupid cold out, which obviously we're at the end of winter here. We're in March going into April, so. That I needed to get this bottle used up anyway. There we go. Let's make sure we bleed all of our other hoses. Normally I like to bleed out of the, the 
fill side there. That way I know I've got everything out, otherwise you might have something inside your gauges. Measly eight ounces right there. We're gonna go ahead and finish this off. About 24 ounces, I think is about as much as I can get in there. It's, it's empty. We're gonna mount this right here. It's able to miss right there. And then this clock is not even the full clock anyway. So all it does is blow up a little bit. You can see we were able to miss that going into the very back. So I just shoved that board just a touch, which is not binding anything. They're just using that as a bracket to hold it. So eventually that's gonna make its way over to there. My favorite wrench here, the full size one. Yep, back it up. That's not quitting, so I had a bad feeling about that. It didn't seem like it'd be right. Let's go ahead and do the pump now, see if that does it. Usually this is gonna put you on the receiver side, but this one does not appear that's how this is piped. Yep, there we go. And you can see our sight glass is pumping down. It does have a Schrader compressor on it. See, I told you it didn't matter which way we went, whether we cranked it in or cranked it out, it didn't matter. So let's go ahead and just put a, an actual swivel T on there and call it a day. So I back seated it, board seated it, didn't matter. Neither one of them was actually shutting it down. You can see on the side here, if you cranked it up, maybe it possibly would have closed that one. Going down, obviously, is not going to do it. But what I am going to tell you is we're not going to use it no more because think about it. If you just want to replace that Schrader core, look how they got that in there. You barely can get into it. This is just a crap design. Cool Pack is, my feelings, some of the lesser quality units out there. It's just design here. Look at this. It's just a shit design. They just did not think it out. Should have brought the suction in on this side right here, closest to the compressor. Would have brought it right over there. Wouldn't overlap this. This would have had room to actually reach things. This valve's higher. It just, it just don't. This is what happens when you hire kids straight out of college to be your engineer. That's what it sure appears that way. If you work for Cool Pack, kiss the sand. If you don't like it, you tell me how that's a good design. We can back that out so you wouldn't get frostbite or you can just shut it off. Let's unhook the suction because I can't hardly get into it. We're going to put a little bit of nylog on the back side of this and then we're going to swivel it back a little bit to try to get it underneath there. It's kind of hard, but liquid oil would be a little easier. Most people don't even use any at all, so it really don't probably matter that much. But right on the face only, probably gonna be a little liquidy. That valve core depressor is out a little bit more than normal. Let's see if we can crank it in where it should have been at to begin with. There, at least now it's flush. That's something you gotta watch out for. If it's not flush, the uh, cap can press in on it. Yeah, that's... That's, that's not gonna work. Make it a little easier on ourselves. Let's go ahead and kick it back on, pump it back down. Hook the suction back up. Wanted to see where it shut off at, which is right around nine pounds. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and get this thing on there. Now you don't have to worry about getting frost bit and losing a bunch of refrigerant. Let's unhook that suction again because Cool Pack didn't think out their design. Such a poor design. I'd be embarrassed. Leave up the back side our flare here. The reason why we're doing that, which so you don't cause it to twist and rip up your copper, just put it on the lips of it, not put it on the uh, threads. And then let's get a backup wrench on there. And what I like to do is put a cap back on there so we don't screw the threads up. And that is the beauty of a Knipix. So I'm gonna try off at a 250 mark right now and see how that is, and then we'll see where that swings at that old suction line again that they didn't think out nope where's this junk made at is it made in canada where's this crap made at cool pack where are you made at parson tennessee huh made down there in tennessee stick with country music guys stick with country music the uh golden ones they go on the electrical there notice we're using the flat side not the pokey side that's how they like, insulated connector is supposed to be cramped. I don't know how many people I see poke it. It's not the right way to do it. Look in the aviation books on how crimps are supposed to be done and you'll find out that is incorrect. There we go. 
You should not be able to pull that off. You should not be able to pull it off. If you can pull it off, you have a shit crimp. Okay, got our Romex connector on there. Let's bring that thing up into the bottom. And by putting it so that the crimp is facing that way, it allows it to have gaps so you're not slamming that next screw in there. We can either gap this so that it has some gapping and it won't hit each other. You can put some silicone on it. I, a lot of times, have been just using a wire tie and I've not had any rupture yet. Whichever one makes you happy. I think I'm just going to go wire tie because what ends up happening, you don't. Then somebody comes in later and partially touches each other and then they go to crap. Well, the fan's wired in now. Let's go turn this back on. Usually I like analog for uh, fan cycle controls. Since it's a little cooler, it probably won't be such a big deal today. What I'm shooting for here is about 110, 115 degree liquid. I want to kick it back on at 90. Some guys go higher and lower. About 109 right there. Coming on. Heck yeah, it's already up to 59. Well, we did a little tweak on the on. So we're still coming on right at about 107, 108. You know, it coasts up a little bit, and starts to run. And I did a little tweak on our differential. So I'm shutting off right now, I think closer to 90. Let's see what we get here. My thought process is you want plenty of swing so that you don't short cycle the compressor. You want plenty of swing so you don't short cycle your fan, causing the bearings to wear out and then proper lubrication. So it's coasting down to 90 as the last bits of the fan does there. We'll be fine there. Sight glass is staying full. And of course, now they got a reach in cooler, it's not working right. So we got to look at that. Thought process, like I said, if it goes up that high, the 260 area, it's going to kick off and it, it should stay. Uh, depending on uh, outdoor temperature, say we're at 80 degrees out or 75, 75 degrees out, 85, 95, you're going to be running at least 20 degrees over ambient, so it should stay running at that point. You get too much of a swing here, it can cause some, uh, some issues with the TXP, the pressure they're going up and down. Most things are based at 100 degrees, at 105, that might be a little better, I like that a little better. Well, that pretty much fixes this one, and none of this equipment's getting routine maintenance. So we've got the date on there, and we've got her up and going. Everything's all happy-go-lucky. The coil there is wrapped, nothing's shaking, staying solid. We're good to go there. Let's go downstairs, see what we got. Oh, look at that. Somewhere in the mid-30s. <laughs> good figure, right? Good deal. Well, that's working. How's the freezer here look? Yeah, it looks cool. It's cold in here. I'm not liking it. It's like five. Looks like defrost is lasting a little longer than it should. You can see the build up. You got some infiltration there, but guess what? It's not what we're here for. So let's go on uh, the other one. All right, so we got a prep table here. And of course, now it's a temperature. Condenser's a little dirty, but you can see light through it, so it's not horrible. A little brush or matic here should do fine to make it better than what it was. It really didn't make much of a difference, but this is a Dell Field, which, you know, I do a lot of true. And you got no name crap like Dosa, which is some Chinese crap. Um, it, product temperature here is 35 degrees, so I mean, can't ask better than that. Meat felt cold. This is wrapped, so I only touch stuff that's wrapped. It's cold. Um, evaporator fans weren't running earlier. They are now, though. It's a weird evaporator. Make sure both of them are working. Yep, blow in there. Never seen this table before. It's kind of weird. So, I don't know, it's working, which is weird. 
evaporators usually never shut off, but now compressors running too, so maybe it's because of energy crap that they shut them down, which I always thought was the stupidest thing ever. And pans feel like they're, yeah, that's cold. I'm just touching the inside of the pan, I mean, it's cold. Um, that's cold, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to get too horribly concerned about it. I got another call to go run. 